Hey, this is Tom from Tom's Tech Show. Today, we're covering backing up VMware with the free version of Veeam, but we're using a script to do it so that it's all automated. Okay, here on the screen we have a script that I'm using. Um, some, of the, some of the values aren't actually real values, but that's fine because uh, we're just using this as an example. Um, but we do need to have a computer with Veeam Backup Replication 9.5, the free version, installed on our system. So once we have that, this also adds in the PowerShell module so that we can do some things like open a window here, and do add ps snap in veeam ps snap in we'll come back here we can do uh, some commands here like uh, what i want to do i want to do a get VBR encryption key. So this is going to list our encryption keys, and this kind of confirms to me that the Veeam PowerShell snap-in is, is there, and that it's working properly. I've actually made a, a call to the Veeam backup system and produced this data. So I know this is working. Okay. So in this script, we put at the, at the top, I have a VM list. This is what I'm going to be backing up. This is what's um, the important things that I want to save. Um, there were the other scripts that I kind of took some pieces from some scripts that people had already made and added my own touch to it, my own flair to it, kind of rewrote a lot of the logic to it. So um, instead of having a script that can only do um, encryption or only do non-encrypted, I combine them together. So when we add records, we can put the server name. This one's my Active Directory ADDNS. I say no queue, which is not to quiesce the box. So this allows, the quiescing allows services to be quieted down so that when you're running the backup, like databases and things like that aren't actively being changed. So I'm going to do no quiesce just to show this as an example, and I'm going to do ENCR, which is encrypt. And now the DNS2, I'm going to quiesce this box, so I put a Q, and then no encrypt, so I'm not going to encrypt the box. So I set some settings. I need to know where my vCenter is, what folder I want to back up to, uh, the compression level I want to use, when to delete this backup. There are several. Um, settings here for deleting backups. Uh, never, tonight, tomorrow night. There's a whole list of them listed here. Um, I actually have that value listed twice, so we can delete that one. Do a little correcting here. Okay. So the SMTP server, because I want to be able to send a mail message out when this runs. This is a script that's going to be scheduled. So I want to be able to get a, an email message once it's done. So my email, who it's from, who it's going to, the subject of the email. Um, if it's going to be encrypted, you need to put in um, some phrase to use as the password of the encryption key. Um, I already showed the when to delete the backup in, in three days is what I'm setting here. Um, and then I've added uh, pieces for um, email SSL. I have a local email box that's inside my network that doesn't have any authentication, so I can just throw mail at it and send it out. Um, if you're using something like uh, Google or Office 365, those SMTP servers out on the internet, you're going to want email S to be SSL. So the email port is here. Um, if you're using standard email like I am here, it's going to be port 25. If you're going to switch to SSL, then it's going to be 587 in most cases. Uh, then email authentication, do we require uh, a login in order to send the message? So that would be if you're using, like I said, Gmail or 
uh, Outlook Office 365, you would want to do that. So once we set all these settings, just this part in the top here, our, our servers we want backed up, um, and all of this small pieces of information, how we want. The rest of the script, you don't have to touch. So this just runs everything, sets uh, the style for the email, sets um, the encryption key, saves and rest restores the encryption key. If it's a new server, it creates a new encryption key. If it's a server we backed up already, it goes and gets the encryption key and brings that down. Um, and then pulls status of how the backup went, and then at the end, sends an email message to us. Okay, so if I'm going to test this, I need to go to Windows PowerShell, and I'm going to run as administrator. The um, Veeam backup needs to be able to access administrator privileges of the system in order to run properly. So I have my scripts stored here in uh, the F drive, which is where all my backups are, and I keep my scripts there. So this is called main backup. So I'm just going to run main backup. Okay. Now, this backup it may pause at the beginning a little bit. It seemed like it's pausing. It's going and getting the data, getting everything. So now we've actually loaded the job, and you can see it process on the screen. So this, when you're running it manually, you can see what's going on. If you're running it through a task, like we want to do, so let me go to Task Scheduler, and I have a backup here, and I'm going to look at the properties. Okay, so this task is scripted Veeam backup. I pick a user for it to log in as. You can, if you have problems, you may have to set it to run with highest privileges, but if I run with a local administrator user, I typically don't have any problems. Okay, so the schedule, I'm setting this to run at 7 p.m. every day, and the action, we'll edit it here, is system root, is to start a program at system root, system 32, Windows PowerShell, version 1.0, PowerShell EXE. And then the argument you want to pass to it is run wherever your directory, your backup is in. Mine is in F scripts backup, yours could be in C users, you know, admin user documents, wherever you store that, um, and put that there. Now, I notice that, always notice that this here says Windows PowerShell version 1, and this really is just the, like, PowerShell launcher version. It doesn't really mean that we're running PowerShell version 1. I mean, if I go to a command prompt and I go to Windows system 32 windows powershell version 1 and i run powershell and that comes up and then to get the version of course as ps version table and i do that it shows me i'm running version 5.1 even though i'm in the 1.0 directory so this is it may be a little deceiving but it's just the launcher version of powershell is is version 1 and then it launches whatever version you have installed. Okay, so that is that. So as the backup is continuing to run, I'll see some little dots form here across the top as it gets going, and I am start seeing the progress. But in the end of it, what happens is I get an email back that looks just like this one. So it tells me the name of the file that it created, which is ADDNS, so I know it's 2019, 1.15 at the time, and it shows me the start time, the end time, and whether it was successful or not. If it says warning or failed, then you know you have to go and check what happened. Uh, warnings would be like running out of disk space on, you know, making snapshots and things like that. And then it tells me some details about that it saved that uh, to the SAN. Okay, so then that's why we want it emailed because I can't see this when it's running as, as a scheduled task. I mean, I can see this here starting to go, the little dots are going here, and that it's running um, and processing. You can see the data processing, but um, if we're doing this as a scheduled task, 
this window is all hidden. You can't see any, any of that information. Plus, it's going to be at night. We want it to run autonomously so that we just come in in the morning and boom, here's our list. Everything's backed up. It all looks good. And then you can just continue on with your day. Okay. So that's how I back up my VMware uh, hosts. This will work if you point it to a virtual center or an individual VMware host. So if you have multiple VMware hosts and they're not controlled by virtual center, you'll have to have a script that points to each individual host, uh, which isn't too bad. You just take it, copy it, run it as another scheduled task, and then you'll have backups for those. All right. Okay, well, that's how you can back up your VMware hosts and VMs using the free version of Veeam Backup. So if you have any questions, comment below. Um, the scripts uh, will be linked to my Bitbucket account where I keep all my scripts and programs uh, that I make available to everybody. Um, yes, and this is a different setting. This is my office. If you can see over here, there are servers over here. And over here, yes, you caught me playing uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And I have my uh, trusty Avengers lunchbox with me today. So uh, thanks for watching and God bless.